Today we're going to continue with part two of our Tasmoda series. In this video, we're going to add the Tasmoda add-on. We're going to add the Tasmoda integration in Home Assistant. We're going to configure the S31 plug using MQTT or with MQTT so that it can talk to the integration and show up in our Home Assistant instance for us to work with. So let's get started. So let's start off by talking about what Tasmoda is. Tasmoda is open source firmware that can be flashed onto the ESP8266 boards. It's created and maintained by FIO or RENS. It started as a Sonoff MQTT OTA uh, firmware and way back in January 25th of 2016. Uh, the goal there and then and now is to provide ESP8266 based devices with MQTT and over the air type firmware updates. You know, it started simple as a cloud, as a kind of a hack, and it's become this major workhorse for doing all kinds of things on 8266 boards. So what we're going to do today is we've already flashed that, and you can look at that in a previous video. This firmware is now on my Sonoff plug my S31 plug, and it's now running Tasmoda. And we're going to pull that into Home Assistant so that we can use the plug in our environment. I'm going to go to my development site, my test Raspberry Pi 4. And the first thing we need to do is go to Supervisor, and we need to install the Tasmoda add-on. As always, we go to the add-on store, and we do a search for Tasmoda. And it's in the Home Assistant core community add-on, so it's part of Home Assistant itself. Uh, in, the, in the community. And we'll just click on install. And I'm running on a Raspberry Pi 4, so this will take a couple of minutes to install, depending, and it'll, the install time depends on what you're running on your device. Okay, now that it's installed, there's no configuration other than just the port. If there's something you need to change in terms of the port so there's no conflict, then you need to make sure you change that. Otherwise, just leave it alone. And we'll go ahead and start it up. And once it's started up, you're going to have the option for a web UI. When you open up the web UI, you're going to be presented with a username password challenge. And it says register here, which basically means you're going to log in. Use the same credentials as you would use for your Home Assistant instance now. And then you click on register. And this is very hard to see, and I can't make it show up any better. This actually over here says auto scan. This over here says add device. If you know of a specific device you want to add, and we'll go ahead and click on that, you have to put the IP address of the device. And if you looked at my previous video, we know what the IP address is, we know the admin and device password. However, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scan and just see what it finds on my network. You wanna make sure that you're scanning the subnet or the network that you're currently on. Also, you have to make sure that when you're scanning, this network has to be the same network that your Raspberry Pi or your Home Assistant instance is on. In my case, it's going to be this network here, 1.1 and 254. Uh, if you've specified a password and username for your devices, you need to make sure you specify that here so it can find them. Uh, remember that passwords are stored in plain uh, in the devices.csv. Uh, CSV file. So make sure if you you do in, insert these that you're aware of that. And then we're going to click on start auto scan. And this is going to take a couple of minutes to scan through my entire network looking for any tasmotized devices. Okay, now that auto scan is complete, you can see that one device was found. And scrolling down, now you can see which device it was actually found. And this is the device IP it found. And it's in position one, so you can you can change the order of devices. If you have multiple devices, you can change the position of where they show up in this interface. That's basically all it applies to. The name is going to be the name on the device, and I've already done this before, so I've renamed this plug. It will come up with um, Tasmoda or Tasmoda underscore or something or whatever. Uh, you need to change this to what you want it to be, and then. If you don't save this, it's not going to save any information and you're going to lose it. So make sure that you test or you save all of this before you go any farther. So I'm going to click on save all. 
And now it tells me devices are added. And this little thing says back. It's really, really hard to see, but that's what it says. What I'll do now is I'll come up to devices and I'll take it and look at the list of devices that I have. And you can see that the freezer plug on this IP address is currently the only device I have. And that's true. It's the only Tasmatized device I currently run within this network. If I click on detail view, I'm going to get some more information. Um, as I said, this plug has been plugged in since about yesterday afternoon, uh, as of the filming of this video. I'm running version 9.4.0 of Tasmoda. The runtime is three hours, two minutes, 21 seconds. This is the energy consumed, the host name, the MAC address, MQTT is enabled, power on state is three, LED state is one. These are different state settings that you can set within the configuration. And of course, over here, you have all of your different options. You can edit the name of the plug uh, itself. You can configure the plug, uh, et cetera. And then you click off detail view, then you now have just the single view here. And then command allows you to send commands to the devices. There's a whole bunch of command stuff that you can use uh, in Tasmoda. And I'm not gonna go into that in this video. I do have one uh, thing I will say is that um, one of my uh, viewers commented the fact that he had to reset uh, one of the power settings. And let me go down here and find it. He had to reset using energy reset. He sent a command to reset the value here. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the reasoning was. When I plugged the plug in the first time, it showed uh, zero, uh, zero, zero for all the, the power monitoring. I think he said he had some sort of value that he had to reset. Again, I'm not sure why he did that. Uh, whatever he was looking at may or may not have, have been something that um, was left over from testing or something else. So I started at zero, I'm okay with that. I didn't have to in issue any reset commands, but you can issue the reset command here and it sends it over MQTT. So you can't even do the command until you have the configuration done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on config here. And I have three different tabs. I have general, network, and MQTT. The friendly name is what I named the plug. And it says, you know, smart speaker, fine name. I assume if you wanna interact with this smart, via smart speaker, and then this is the name you're gonna give it. Your power on state is important, especially where I have this. I have this plugged into a freezer. I want the relay to be where it was when I when the power went off. So if, for example, if the power went off and the freezer was enabled, it needs to turn back on when the power comes back on. Otherwise, you know, you could lose everything in the freezer. Uh, LED state shows power state on LED. Uh, sleep duration for energy saving. I'm plugged into the wall. I mean, I don't know that there's a lot of energy saving uh, for this. Network is going to be uh, the host name. So this is where it show, what it shows up as on your uh, Wi-Fi network. I change it to match. Uh, all of my settings will say freezer plug. IP address is what it's currently set to. Gateway, subnet mask, DNS server, MAC address. And then for timekeeping purposes, the NTP server. And then some stuff with the Wi-Fi, which I did not have to set because when I flashed it, I set it all up at the beginning. And then MQTT is the important part. Now this has already been pre-configured on the plug. I did this before. There's, there's no difference in doing this from scratch versus looking at it now. And I'll just go over the fields. This is my MQTT host. This is where my MQTT broker resides. And in Home Assistant, I have an MQTT add-on as my MQTT broker. And this is the broker that I use and I'm sending stuff to for my Tasmodo ad or for my Tasmodo devices. So that's this IP address. The MQTT port is a standard 1883. My client name is the name of the MQTT or it is the client name of the plug or the device. I call it freezer plug. I don't use this. The login is the user that I use for the broker and the password. So if you have authentication on your broker, then you need to insert the username and password. The topic is freezer plug. And then the full topic, you always want to leave this alone unless you know what you're doing. Uh, I don't, I didn't touch this. The, you know, if you do this wrong, you put, you could potentially break something. I leave the group topic, all of this stuff, the same, the command, the prefix to 
stat, this is short for state and telemetry are all the same. I'll leave those the same. That's what comes across in the MQTT. When you're doing the integration, you want to leave everything default because the integration is then going to take this information and work with it on behalf of Tasmoda and the plug and everything else. If you mess with this stuff, you could potentially break the integration. You can, if you're doing everything manually, change all this to your heart's content, but I would leave it alone. Same thing with state text for on and off, for toggle, for hold. Uh, the retry timer, I left at 10. And the, the telemetry period in seconds, I upped that to 30 seconds because I'm measuring power and whatnot with this plug. And because it's plugged into an outlet, I'm not worried about battery uh, or anything else. If you had something that was running on a battery, 30 second update times might be a little excessive for your battery. And then my retain button, retain power, retain sensor, I'm leaving all of this as default as well. When you make any changes, you wanna save it. Now, all of this is the settings that are done within the UI here. You can also go back and do all of this stuff directly in your plug itself. And we saw this in the last video at the very end where I was doing the MQ or doing the Wi-Fi setup. But if you click on this link right here, it's gonna open the devices web UI. And now you're getting the same setting stuff that you had in the other window. So I can click on configuration. I can configure the module, which we did at the end of the video last time. I can configure Wi-Fi. And then um, if you wanna change that, see here, here's your host name. By the way, when you do change something in the, the Tasmo admin interface, it's going to backlog the, the configuration changes. And after a period of time, it will send all those configuration changes. So if you make a number of configuration changes at one time, it won't restart the plug every time you do that or restart the device. It will backlog all those changes, send them all in one big chunk and then do a restart if it's needed. So that's, uh, that's important to know because if you make a change over there and you come immediately look here, it may not be the same. It, would, it may not be reflective of what you did on the other interface. You can configure MQTT like we did here before. So it's your choice of whether you use this here for this interface or you use the interface directly. If you click on this edit here, you're gonna get information on the device IP and the user name and password and the name of the device. You can also set it to include it in the all off mode, protect it from powering on or protect it from powering off. If you click on devices or just click on home here, now you're gonna get a listing of all your devices. In order for the integration to work, um, and let's get to the integration now. We've configured the plug, we set up MQTT on the plug, but we haven't got it to do anything in Home Assistant yet. So if we go over to configuration, we look at integrations now, you'll see this discovered Tasmoda, if everything's working right. If I click on configure, it's gonna ask me if I wanna set it up, which I do. It's going to tell me that it found this freezer plug that I've put in there, my Sonoff S31. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a spot, finish there. And now I have under my Tasmoda one device and 20 entities. Anytime Home Assistant discovers a new Tasmoda device, as long as you're running the Tasmoda add on, it's going to ask you to add it like we just did. So let's look at the device. We have one device called freezer plug, and it has all these entities. Now, when you set the, the name uh, of the device, this MQTT topic for one freezer plug and client name freezer plug, this is what you're gonna get, all of these freezer plug um, names on here. Otherwise, it's gonna default to Tasmoda or something else. So before you enable it here, make sure you've configured it with the name you want it to be here so you know what it is. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time knowing which device is which if you don't give it a meaningful name. And right now you can see that we are actually pulling in data and we have data from when I had this installed yesterday. So once you have this installed to this point, this means that your Tasmoda device is now ready for use. And we can take a look at one of these values. For example, let's look at energy today and click on that right there. And we can actually see the energy it has used today, which is 0.744 kilowatt hours. And this is in the last uh, hour or so. You can also look at voltage that's coming in. So if you wanted to mo monitor your voltage levels at a certain outlet, that's what you could do as well. Yesterday's uh, ver uh, energy usage. Now, when you click on this graph here, it only goes back um, 
a certain amount of time. So clicking on it here, this gives me only the last hour because that's when I added the plugin. Once you have this plugin for a while, you'll see longer periods of storage of the data. Now I can add this entire card to Loveless by clicking one button right here. I'm going to add it to my default, uh, my default dashboard. Let me see if it actually did that. Now let me go back over here, configuration integrations, one device, this device, add to Loveless, default, and I can add to Loveless UI here. Now going and looking at the dashboard, I will see that I have this whole plug set up over here. And I can turn the plug on and off with this right here. Uh, I can also go in here and edit the raw configuration and move that over to the other side. I mean, this gets in the scope of how you want this actually set up, but I can take this entire entity's card and take it from that spot and stick it over here under the first spot. Okay. Now, if I look at the plug or at the dashboard, you'll see it over here. And then you can start taking this stuff and adding it to your favorite graphing thing like Grafana or stored in InfluxDB or whatever your favorite tool is for keeping long-term data. You can add it to dashboards for turning the plugs on and off. Uh, you can set it to your automations to do specific things. You now have the full function of Home Assistant based on entities here uh, to do anything you want with this plug. So that's as simple as you can get for adding a Tasmoda device into Home Assistant. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. This is part two of the two-part series. Part one talks about going back and flashing Tasmoda on the plug. Part two here talks about how to get the plug into Home Assistant. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Hit me up on Discord. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. I know that Tasmoda has been around for a while. I hope this is a little refresh for some of you that have been, haven't played, for, played with it in a while. And for those of you who haven't seen it at all, it's something new for you to play with. Those ESP8266 boards using Tasmoda or ESP Home or, or custom firmware like that are very powerful. You can, you can do lots of things with the board. You can attach the boards to other things like relays, Arduinos, uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, this opens the world of, of automation to making things that aren't smart, smarter. And there's lots of examples of that out on the internet. You can look for those. Again, let me know if you have any questions, comments, etc. And I really appreciate you watching. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button as well. And we'll see you on the next video.